Hi everyone, my name is Brian, I'm 26, and today we're going to have a raw conversation about conversations in your 20s. And it's going to cover everything from the things that you talk about, the way that you talk about things, the people you talk about with, and just overall discussing the idea of conversations as a 20-something year old. Uh, for context, I live in New York City, I love talking, uh, my main hobby slash even work somewhat includes talking. I've been known to be good at talking and also enjoy talking. So. For take that for what it's worth, I know there's plenty of people out in this world, past their 20s, at whatever age group, that don't enjoy talking, so perhaps this conversation doesn't apply to you. But if you enjoy talking, you're in your 20s, I think you'll get a gist of what I'm talking about. First of all, in your 20s, uh, if you've gone down the normal, regular path, the number one thing that people talk about is work. Uh, that is the all-encompassing thing to talk about. In conversation in general, you have to relate. The reason why good conversations happen and bad conversations happen is because people have differing relation points, uh, sympathy, empathy. People that can relate to each other have better conversations because there's more context to talk about things. Work is kind of the unifying factor between all folks in their 20s, especially mid-20s, especially in a metropolitan area. So immediately, especially if you're engaging in a new conversation or even with people that you already know, the first ever topic to come up is, what do you do? Uh, do you enjoy what you're doing? When's the latest been with work? Especially if you do similar fields of work, then you have more relation points. You talk crap on your company together, hate your job together. But overall, the looming theme is that work is work and work overall sucks. And you complain about work at these hangout spots. Uh, I think, especially for me, who does something somewhat special of work, which if you guys don't know, I work at a NFT marketplace and we uh, operate a relatively large scale uh, but small team startup. So work is a bit fascinating to talk about, but it's in many times less relatable. So of course I'm in this bubble or vacuum where everyone is in the NFT crypto space. So talking with them, talk for hours about what's going on in the industry and what the latest is with their platform versus our platform. But outside of that, it's kind of like, a, oh, that's what you do. I know crypto. Uh, and then it kind of just dies down unless they have a specific interest in tech. But if you meet someone that possibly does the thing that you already do or does the thing that you want to do, the conversations are endless. So in your 20s, work by far, you'll relate is the thing that people talk about. And the number one theme usually is that work sucks and they want to either find a new job or in the process of looking at a new job or gave up looking at a new job because it's so hard and they're going to be staying with their existing job because it's actually not that bad now that you think about it. A lot of times it's coping mechanisms for not being able to move or find a new job that's better. Second thing that people in their mid-20s talk about the most by far is love, romance, relationships, dating. This is obviously looming in their mind as marriage is no longer that far away for many of them. It's a possibility. Some of them are also drinking copium and saying that, oh, it's far away from me. Probably because either they can't date, they're not dating, they recently broke up, or they believe in this like, oh, I'm gonna get married when I'm 30, 40 thing. And then by that time, they're probably gonna look back and think, damn, I should've been married. But that's my worldview. Dating, marriage, people talk about all the time. A lot of conversations that I also engage in is a lot about what kind of woman, what kind of man you're looking for, your ideal type. It's a fun conversation, your dating history. It's a lot more fun for people that are actually not dating to talk about dating and the people that are dating to talk about not dating perhaps or talk about dating amongst each other. This has been across all age groups. I've talked this with early 20s to mid 20s to late 20s, even 30s, 40s, 50s. It's always fun also if you have people that are in the next step giving you advice. So people that are, are married or people that were in your shoes privately but got married relatively recently, talking about it, that's also fun. I think this age group range expansion allows for better and more in-depth conversation. Also with work too, as your friend group is not only the people within your age group, but people before your age group and also after your age group, which diversifies the level of conversation you have uh, as opposed to back being back in high school or college, where back then you were kind of limited to your own segment of folks and it's not necessarily people that have done the thing that you've already done unless they're a couple of grades ahead, but now it's like same life stage but multiple years ahead or a different life stage that you have access to as you become an adult and in your 20s. The third thing that people talk most about is just gossip. And this only applies to people that you have common mutual friends with, people that share a community with you. But human beings at the end of the day are gossipers. Uh, Malcolm, no, uh, Yuval Harari says in his book Sapiens that the things that set apart humans is their ability to gossip. And a lot of times they're low quality conversations. People obviously don't really prefer to gossip, but uh, underlyingly people love gossiping. And if you have, or if you bring together a group of people that know other mutual friends together, 
natural progression overnight, unless you have a pretty high quality group of people, is to gossip and talk bad on people, or even somewhat talk good on people, but hear about the latest scoop on the general group and public. So past gossip, I think there's this uh, area of things called hobbies. And a lot of times this is sports or interest or even entertainment that people wanna talk about. I personally could give less about a Sports team, I don't really care. I don't really like having other people get the spotlight. So I don't really understand people that are so eager and passionate about teams as if it's their team. That always kind of annoys me to some extent. That's not your team. You've never met any of these people. You supporting this isn't going to really help them. But to each their own, a lot of conversations around sports. Again, going back to the original idea of you need to find people that have similar interest than in you and hit it off that have equal passion about the Lakers or whatever Jets team that you have that you want to talk about. Power be to you, that's great. Then I think there's an overarching uh, area of conversation depending on level of education, your interests, the comfort level of what you wanna talk about is talking about ideologies or politics, uh, things that matter beyond you that you have an opinion on. I think this is a slight derail from the sports and hobbies in the sense that you might not necessarily be specifically involved. You might not be playing the sport or attending it. Uh, but with politics and ideology, it really has to do with enjoying the conversation for conversation itself. And as people like me who are talkers, we love this realm of things where you just go on endless hours about the stupidest conversations of like, would you rather do this or that, all the way to who are you voting for this election cycle and why do you do those? And I think that requires a level of comfort uh, because politics and ideology typically is a very hot button topic. You can't really get to convince the other person of the thing that you're believing in. But once you have that comfort or everyone involved is naturally comfortable with these topics, regardless and high, high enough uh, confidence to not get too wrapped up in this and not be insecure about the opinions or get easily offended, then that is a prime spot for conversation. Because frankly, the other four things that I just mentioned, where it's job and dating and uh, hobby and uh, the realm of gossip, which all have to do with uh, facts. Uh, of course, gossip could be exaggerated, but those things are things that are happening actually in real life with the result. Those conversations have limits because there's only so much facts you can share, uh, especially if you don't share those commonalities and there's not much more commentary to add to those four things. Those four things, there's limitations of what you can talk about. But this fifth realm of things, which I think is completely in a different category, really gets fun, especially post-college education, coming from your different backgrounds, from where you're living, who you believe in, what you believe in. And then merging those ideas together and being able to have that intellectual conversation is prime mid-20s. Like nothing is more fun than having established positions have relatively data points and uh, a view on what you believe in. And then being able to converge on those things and talking amidst each other is unbelievably fun. And I think especially if you come together with a diverse, truly diverse, not in this like cliche meaning of diverse, but people from all corners of the world, especially a place like New York where there's people from all over the United States, all over the world that come from different schools of thought and they bring in their ideologies, whether it be politics, religion, or just worldviews in general, nothing is more fascinating than that. And I think that is the kicker of the mid 20s conversations, the essence of the Zen, the prime cherry on top that really makes 20s conversation rich because that allows you to just go full steam on what you believe in and then hear out what the other people believe in. And I really want that to continue. I feel like content, ironically, hypocritically, is limiting that because you're just listening to what other people are saying online as opposed to engaging in conversation with them. It's a very scary world to be in when all you're doing is listening and not really interacting and not feeding back off onto each other based on what they're saying and based on what you're saying. That I think is the essence of how human beings evolve and learn when in reality right now, all you're doing is consuming the information that I'm feeding you. It'd be a lot better if you could go back and say, actually, Brian, you're full of it. And none of the things that you're saying is true. We have conversations about other things, or I don't enjoy conversation, or I think you talk too much. Then I get that feedback and converge back. Whereas right now, all you're doing is mindlessly scrolling and thinking, okay, well, I wanna hear what this guy has to talk about. I think this two-way streak is so essential. So that's all to say, I think in your 20s, you have a lot of fully formed opinions. You become more eloquent. You become more comfortable with yourself. So you're able to express yourself. And I think we've gone to this world now where dialogue is very hard because people are already separated in their own different ways. They have this mindset that the other person is not gonna be convinced by what you're saying. And it's easily offended and all these hodgepodge things where 
if anything, the mid 20s should be the prime time for better ideas to talk through things, to be convinced of other things and realize, oh shit, maybe that's actually a good idea. But now we're so doing this and watching this and being consuming and polarized that it's hard to do so. So I challenge you guys to pick up a conversation, be open, talk about these things with the people around you, enjoy your 20s, embrace those times because that's the time that you are able to have fully length conversations but still have time to change your mind on some of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. I hope that you guys engage at least in the comments so that we could talk. Uh, and as always, I'll see you guys next time. Let's go.